Hi everyone! Welcome back to Inside Archaeology, where we dig deep into the world of heritage. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and I'm an archaeologist. I've dug in Jordan, Canada, the UK, and I studied Greek, Roman, Egyptian, and Mesopotamian archaeology at university. In today's video, I am reviewing Unknown, The Lost Pyramid, a new documentary on Netflix that premiered in July 2023. It is the first in a four-part series that, to quote Netflix, tells breathtaking stories of adventure and exploration in awe-inspiring uncharted territories. It is set at the necropolis of Saqqara in Egypt and pivots between featuring the 2021 digs of Dr. Zahi Hawass and Dr. Mustafa Waziri. In today's video, I will look at the background of these digs, what exactly are they looking for and why, and finish with my overall review of the documentary from an archaeologist's perspective. Dr. Hawass is quite an interesting and very famous figure in Egyptology, and it's been a while since I've seen him on screen, so he should give me some interesting things to talk about. Before we start, I've done hours of research to make this video, and it is not sponsored, so if you like what I'm doing here, please give me a thumbs up, a follow, and or watch this video to the end to help support the channel. If you are so inclined, you can also go to my Ko-fi page and give me a small tip. The link to my Ko-fi is in the description box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're interested in learning more about what it's like to be a real archeologist and the discoveries that we're making every day that are changing history. All right, let's dig in. The first thing that struck me about this show when I saw the trailer and then watched it was that it is very similar to Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb, another Netflix documentary that came out in 2020, which I have also reviewed. You can find a link to watch that here. As I've already said, Lost Pyramid features two digs going on at Saqqara, Gisr el Mudir and the Bubastian. So I'm going to cover each dig individually before talking about the overall thing at the end. First up, we have Dr. Hawass looking for the Pyramid of Huni at Gisr el Mudir. Now, if you haven't heard of Hawass, you've clearly been living under a rock for the past few decades when it comes to Egyptology, because this guy is probably the most recognizable Egyptologist on the planet. He studied for his doctorate at the University of Philadelphia and worked his way up from a site inspector to become the Egyptian Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs twice. His specialty is the Old Kingdom, but he does a little bit of everything. He is the head of the Scan Pyramids Project, which is basically trying to x-ray the pyramids since we can't excavate them. He also led the team that CT scanned King Tutankhamun and other royal remains. And he has many, many other projects besides that. He has written many books and been on quite a few TV programs besides this one. He was forced to retire from the ministry in 2011, but clearly he's not actually really retired. His project is located in an area a few hundred meters west of the Steppe Pyramid of Djoser, where the desert looks barren, but here and there, stone masonry walls of rectangular enclosures emerge from the sand. How they refer to this area in the documentary is a bit confusing because they are clearly referring to an open patch of desert that hasn't been previously excavated. However, there is also a large monument in this location that is also called Gisr el Mudir. This translates to the Great Enclosure. So I'm going to refer to the monument as such throughout the rest of this to avoid confusion. The Great Enclosure was first noted in the 1800s, but its full extent was not appreciated until aerial photographs in the 1920s revealed its true size. It has massive stone cut walls and is thought to be even older than the Steppe Pyramid. Its function is not yet known. It measures about 650 by 350 meters, and this consists of two north-south oriented rectangular wall enclosures made of roughly hewn limestone about 15 meters apart. The space between the two walls is filled with crushed stone, gravel, and sand. The west wall is 30 meters shorter than the east wall, and the south wall probably consisted of two parallel walls forming an entranceway. This is a pattern that is also seen at the funerary complex of the Steppe Pyramid. In the enclosed area, no remains have been found, so this means that there can't have been a pyramid or a different type of burial structure at the center, since this would have had to have been made before the completion of an enclosure wall. 
The first excavation here was carried out in 1947 and 1948, but the results of that haven't been published. Systemic research was first undertaken in the 1990s, employing techniques like magnetometry and ground penetrating radar. Before these excavations, the structure was thought to be an unfinished pyramid complex from the third dynasty. However, pottery shards in the filling of the walls were found to date to the late second or beginning of the third dynasty, which is what has led to some Egyptologists believing that this might have been constructed at the end of the second dynasty and that it probably represents a transitional stage between similar enclosures at Abydos and the Steppe Pyramid of Djoser. Unlike what you might think, the excavations in the Netflix documentary are outside of this enclosure, not inside it, and they are located between it and the Steppe Pyramid. Hawass is attempting to find what he calls the Lost Pyramid of Huni. The last king of the third dynasty in the Old Kingdom, who is commonly credited with ruling for about 24 years, around 4,600 years ago. Huni is seen by scholars as a confusing figure because he was long remembered in Egyptian traditions by his funerary cult, but very few documents, objects, or monuments from his reign have been discovered. What Dr. Hawass says about the scarcity of Old Kingdom remains is true. Information from the fourth to sixth dynasties is scarce, and we regard the history of this era as literally being written in stone, as it's largely architectural, and it is through the monuments and the inscriptions on them that we have been able to construct a history of this time. Many Egyptologists believe that Huni was the father and direct predecessor of King Sneferu, who built three pyramids. This would also make Huni the grandfather of Khufu, who built the Great Pyramid. However, this lineage is not definitive and hasn't been 100% proven, so it's questioned by other Egyptologists. Next to nothing is known of Huni's time on the throne. There are no religious or military activities known from during his reign, and the only contemporary documents are the tomb inscriptions of high officials. These are dated to the time span from the end of the third dynasty into the beginning of the fourth dynasty. They show that the reign of Huni must have been the beginning of the heyday and peak of the Old Kingdom. It is plausible to think that Huni would have had his own pyramid. The Steppe Pyramid is from the beginning of the Third Dynasty, so these kind of monumental burial structures were not without precedent. What the show doesn't mention is that there are several other monuments that already exist and have already been found that could be Huni's final resting place. This includes the Layer Pyramid at Zayat el Aryan, a huge mastaba at Meidum, or the Mastaba AS-54 at South Abusir. Mastabas are a type of ancient Egyptian tomb consisting of a flat-roofed rectangular structure with inward sloping sides made of mud brick. They marked the burial sites of many prominent Egyptians during the early dynastic period and the Old Kingdom. However, nothing definitive has been found at the above-mentioned sites, which can solve the mystery of where Huni was buried. For example, the necropolis of the Layer Pyramid is still incompletely investigated, as it lies within a military area that has been restricted for access since 1970, and before that, the most recent excavation was in 1910-11 and wasn't exhaustive. Clearly, Hawass doesn't give any of these theories credence and has his own hypothesis for where the pyramid will be, although his explanation for why on the show is rather thin on the ground. It seems he thinks it's there because it's in Saqqara, this was the area that was being used at this period in time for these kinds of monuments, and this particular spot that he's in hasn't been heavily excavated before. During his excavations, Hawass's team discovers an Old Kingdom noble cemetery, leaving him to believe that Huni is somewhere in the area through the logic that nobles at this time wanted to be buried near to a king. They unearth some really beautiful statues and feature the discovery of a shaft tomb containing a sarcophagus and the burial of a man named Heka Shepes, which is covered in gold leaf and might be the oldest and most complete mummy found in Egypt to date. He's around 4,300 years old. There is a scene where Hawass puts his head inside the sarcophagus and then looks at the camera and says, beautiful, which, yes, like, I agree with that statement. But in that particular scene, I found it quite cringy and really over-dramatized for the camera, in my personal opinion. At the end of the dig season, Hawass's team finds another wall that they state could be over 100 meters long and potentially part of another enclosure or burial complex. But of course, 
what it actually ends up being is left on a cliffhanger since it's the end of the season. Even though this was filmed in 2021, I haven't been able to find more information on it since even though it's been a while since then, they and, and they have probably gone back, uh, whatever update they have is probably being saved for another press release. Or it could be that it turned out to not be what they were looking for, and so they're not going to say anything until they have found something more credible. I should note that the release of information about discoveries in Egypt is very tightly controlled by the Supreme Council of Antiquities. If you say anything publicly without their approval, you are in big trouble and could possibly have your dig permits revoked. There is a really cool virtual tour of the cemetery and the tomb of Hekashefes that they have put online, which I have linked in the description below for you if you're interested in checking it out. The other dig featured in the documentary is run by Dr. Waziri at the Bubastian. Dr. Waziri is currently the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities of Egypt. The Bubastian was a Ptolemaic and Roman temple complex dedicated to the goddess Bastet. In the second half of the 18th dynasty, high dignitaries created rock-cut tombs for themselves in this area, which were then later reused as cat catacombs. To date, more than a hundred cat mummies and thousands of cat bones have been found there. The Secret of the Saqqara Tomb Show from 2020 covered Waziri's discovery of the perfectly preserved tomb of Wachi. In 2021, his team has returned and discovered a shaft that leads to a burial chamber containing several sarcophagi and statues. Some of the statues need to have conservation work done on them in situ before they can be removed, which personally I found really fascinating to watch. That was actually one of my favorite parts of the documentary as I never really come across a lot of conservative work before. However, the greatest discovery was found in the wooden coffin of a man named Ahmose. Tucked inside the coffin, alongside the mummified remains, was a papyrus scroll that measures 15 meters long and consists of 113 chapters of the Book of the Dead. This makes it one of the most well-preserved versions in the world. Amos is mentioned 260 times in the document, which is written in the hieratic script a cursive way of writing abridged hieroglyphics. The text is mostly written in black ink with some sections in red. As we see in the show, it has been named the Waziri Papyrus. Dating to 50 BCE, it has been translated into Arabic and English and has now been put on display at the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square, Cairo. It will eventually be displayed at the Grand New Egyptian Museum, a massive museum they've been building in Egypt and Cairo for quite a while and whose official opening has undergone several delays, but is currently slated for 2023-4. To put it into some context, the Book of the Dead is a funerary text generally written on papyrus and used from the beginning of the New Kingdom to around 50 BCE. The original Egyptian name for the text is translated as Book of Coming Forth by Day or Book of Emerging Forth into the Light. While we call it a book, this is a bit of a misnomer because it is actually a loose collection of texts consisting of a number of magic spells intended to assist a dead person's journey through the underworld into the afterlife. And it was written by many priests over a period of about a thousand years. It is essentially a cheat sheet for the underworld. There was no single or canonical book of the dead. Surviving papyri contain a varying selection of religious and magical texts and vary considerably in their illustration. It would seem that people would commission their own copies and choose to include the spells that they thought would be most vital in their own progression to the afterlife. So that's the background on the archaeological discoveries in the documentary. Now we're going to cover what did I personally think of it. Honestly, I like Secret of the Saqqara Tomb better, but this was okay. I did feel like it was very over-dramatized and some parts of it felt really contrived or manufactured to me. It couldn't seem to decide if it was a documentary, a reality show, or like an adventure film. Unlike the other documentary, it is almost entirely spoken in English and the majority of screen time is taken up by Dr. Hawass and Dr. Waziri and doesn't feature their teams and the actual digging that was going on nearly as much. We saw lots of archaeological tools and methods being featured, which was great, which includes, as I said, the conservation and then also the analysis of a mummy in situ. There is lots of glove wearing around delicate objects, which I'm sure will make lots of people happy. There are a few statements made that I found, let's say, interesting. 
At the beginning, they talk about the nine month dig season as if it's a really short deadline or time limit, which to me at least, it's definitely not. Research excavations like these are numbered in the years. And most of the time, especially with foreign expeditions or field schools, they only go on for about six to eight weeks a year. Nine months is a lot of time to excavate. So this kind of timeline is a bit of a false deadline uh, that I'm sure they talk about to try and create a sense of urgency on the show. Hawass has another quote where he says that only 30% of Egypt's treasures have been uncovered and 70% is still beneath the sand. I'd like to know how he reached that number because it actually makes no sense to me. There is no way to quantify what is still left to be discovered since you don't know it's there until you found it. Ergo, this is kind of a nothing statement, once again, made to kind of drum up a sense of excitement. Probably the statement that I like the least is a scene where he tells his PhD student, Tori, that she can't bring a bag onto an excavation or be Indiana Jones because he's Indiana Jones. So she can be Indiana Jones's girlfriend. I disagree heavily with both of those statements. <laughs> I always have a backpack on site for all of my stuff. And honestly, you don't really want to be Indiana Jones or his girlfriend because he's really not a good archaeologist. I found entertaining the comments they made about a, the smell of a decomposed body because it is so true and also is not something that you ever really think about in archaeology until you come across your first smelly feature. Usually it's a cesspit. Glamorous, I know. <laughs> it's also implied in the show's description and trailer that there is a rivalry between Hawass and Waziri and their teams but it's pretty firmly established at the beginning that it's not really a competition in the way that they imply. They have separate digs looking for separate things at separate periods of time, and both of those digs are important. I suppose they're perhaps competing over how important. They also talk a little bit about how they need to find something significant in order to come back. And while I'm sure that that's true for a lot of digs, considering that Waziri is the head of antiquities and Hawass is used to be his boss I, I don't think either of them are going to be really lacking for funding to come back to their digs in terms of what's authentic and what's staged I would say it's a mix and there is definitely a clear case of we found something important let's stop until we can get the director and the film crew here so we can get it on camera I very much doubt that they had a film crew on site for all nine months of the season Personally, if you have the money and the time to pause your dig to do that, I don't see a problem with it. And I think it's great to get these kinds of moments on cameras. I think it's really clear that audiences really engage with that moment of discovery and they really enjoy participating in that. That being said, it means that they come off sometimes as being really manufactured. In my experience, when we find cool stuff, there's a lot more swearing and, and kind of general panic. <laughs> My biggest issue with the documentary is the same as the secret of the Saqqara, the stark lack of any kind of health and safety protocol. It is a huge contrast to what I'm used to in the UK where we wear lots of high vis, hard hats, steel toe boots, and when we go onto site we're doing safety talks all the time. We have inductions about risks and manual handling courses so that we don't throw out our backs. It's a really jarring difference to then go to Egypt and see people digging in sandals and bare feet. <laughs> Both Secret of the Saqqara Tomb and Unknown the Lost Pyramid feature an almost entirely Egyptian cast of experts and dig teams with the occasional foreigner thrown in. This is because there is a really big movement, which I have to give credit, was very much pioneered by Hawass, to have Egyptians be at the forefront of Egyptology and the discoveries that are being made in their country about their ancestors. It is true that until very recently, foreign excavations led the way in innovation and discovery in Egypt. So Egyptians wanting to reclaim their heritage is something that I can totally understand and sympathize with. Personally, I find Hawass a, a bit heavy handed. He is clearly quite a big personality, but at the same time, I can see that you kind of need to be that kind of person to institute the kind of changes that he has. All right, that's everything for today. Have you guys watched the documentary? What did you think? Is there anything that I missed? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you've made it all the way to the end, don't forget to support me with a like or subscribe before you go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.